Hallelujah. Psalm 18, 19 says that he brought me forth into a large place, a large place. He brought me forth into a large place. Just shows you the mentality of God and how his deliverance works. Salvation brings you into a large place. Salvation is not it's not a temporary moment of relief. It's a large place. It's a large place. In Psalm 18, 19, it said that he brought me forth into a large place and he delivered me because he delighted in me. Now, saints, I want to deal with this because this is so amazing because if you think about it, God delighting in you means that you're following his kingdom system. You're following the way of his system. This is how he delights in you. Now, saints, if you look at the word delight, in the word delight is light. So when you delight yourself in the Lord, it means that you're sticking to the light in which he has shown you, the light in which he has entrusted to you. And in Psalm 119, it says that the interest of your word giveth life. So delight means that you have allowed the entrance of his word into you. And wherever that word subject was, whether it was the subject on healing, whether it's the subject on deliverance, whether it's the subject of freedom, whether it's the subject of peace, whether it's the subject of joy, whether it's the subject of money, wherever that light came into you, you delight yourself by engaging that word. Psalm 18, 19 said that he brought me into a broad place. I'm talking to you in here about wealth cometh to me now. Wealth cometh to me now. Wealth is the plan of God to solidify his greatness in your life. Wealth is the power of God to do more for yourself, for the gospel, for others. Wealth is an advantage in the spirit realm. It's a weapon. Wealth is a weapon. God uses wealth to take you out of the slavery, the manipulation, and the defeat of devils. Wealth is God's response to the faithful sower. Wealth is a covenant that God makes with you because he made it with your father, Abraham. He swore to Abraham that you would have this. So saints, Isaiah the prophet got a revelation of the wealth gates in Isaiah 60, verse 11. He said that my gates will be open continually. They will not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto me the wealth of the Gentiles. But what I want you to see with Isaiah was this. Why did Isaiah say my gates will not be shut day or night? Isaiah was talking about a realm where wealth, the abundance of money, the abundance of provision, the abundance of God's supply will never stop reaching you. It will never have a moment of breach a moment of end, a moment of pause. It won't be paused one time. So, so look at this here. Isaiah had a revelation that there is a place that a believer could go where the financial schedule of the Holy Ghost goes uninterrupted. Not even 
the prince of Persia, the demons of delay, no spirit of the thief will have any authorization to have a voice in this place. Isaiah was a prophet of God that revealed this mystery to the church, to the believers. Think about it. A prophet is a wealth agent. Listen to me in here. They come to reveal to you the banking system of the father. They, they come to show you why you should sign up for this bank called Jehovah Jireh. And see, see, see what well, if we if we really study this, Isaiah the prophet was telling the people that these wealth gates ain't got nothing to do with this natural economy that you in on earth. It don't got nothing to do with this famine. It don't got nothing to do with this 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 uh deficit, this breach, this uh, economic downfall. It don't got nothing to do with this. This is in the presence of God, the presence of heaven, and it is heaven's schedule for you if you'll let him have his way. David said that he has brought me into a large place. Psalm 18, 19. He has brought me into a large place. What was David talking about? David talking about wealth. Now, saints, Remember Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse five and on. Remember what it said, that blessed shall you be in your basket and in your store. One of the words for store in the Hebrew is vault. Listen to me, listen to me. One of the words in Hebrew for store is vault. One of the definitions of vault is a large storage room. Let, let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back. Psalm 1819, David said, Man Tolono vian nefion. Valescuno Gorvelli Nishienas, Ila Sono Govale Crenevis. David said that he has brought me into a large place. Large place. Deuteronomy 28, 5 and on said that, Blessed shall you be in your basket and in your store. One of the words for store in the Hebrew is vault. One of the definitions for vault is a large storage room. A large room. A large place. Look, 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 look. So saints, what you have to catch is, when David said that he brought me into a large place, he was saying that the blessing, the riches of God, has ushered him into a lifestyle of spaciousness, breathing room, rest, ease, wealth cometh to me right now. Wealth is God establishing what he promised Abraham would be your lifestyle. Wealth is God representing what he has spoken to Isaac and Jacob, what he told them that he was going to bring to your bosom. Don't hinder the wealth power of God. Receive it. Walk in it. Let it take you from glory to glory. Don't let the wealth power of God sit and you not use it. Take a hold of that wealth power. Now, saints, oh, I, well, I want you to see what the wealth power is this as well. The wealth power of God causes you to speak. 
in the avenue of wealth. The wealth power of God makes you talk wealthy. So the wealth anointing teaches you the vocabulary that coincides with wealth. The vocabulary that establishes wealth. Wealth, it, it, it makes you a mouthpiece of money correctly. And see, wealth, the anointing of wealth teaches you why God is giving you that abundance. The anointing of wealth also teaches you why never to trust the money, but to keep on trusting God. Because when you trust the money, you will mute God's voice of instructions and guidance on how to disperse that wealth. How to never trust money, but how to trust the Lord Jesus. The wealth anointing makes you conscious of spending. It shows you how you're wasting money. Blangre ben grovanta, vale grestes, telecles in ivianca navion, manzenigo rafa carenizies, vele grove capelizianos, palananzo mocrevenios. The wealth anointing, it shows you how to spend money through the wisdom and the fear of the Lord. It shows you how you waste money. It shows you what you have purchased that's not necessary. Think about it, saints. The anointing is where God gives you information about a thing. And once you get the information, now you have the ability and the access to do it. That's what the anointing teaches you. Because that information is carrying an ability. God gets abilities to you through words. God gets abilities to you through words. So what God does, if he wants you to learn how to be a wife, he speaks words to you that wives should do. If God is teaching you how to be a son, he speaks words to you that sons should conduct. If God wants you to heal the sick, he speaks words to you to sculpture you into the navigation, the ability, the behavior of healing the sick. So Jesus said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover because that behavior is now information. It's information to you for it to become what you conduct. The anointing is a, a, a powerful manifestation making information. Graza non ze grevenizienes, gremandolo covasque leveniz, grosse capologi niziana, capole nevenizianto, graba della gasque nevenies, gradava gadafi felenenzio. Are you seeing what I'm telling you on here? So, the, when, when you say I'm anointed, you're saying I have information that God has spoken to me with words and now I know how to get access into a thing or do a thing. So saints, I'm anointed, which means I have words that I've heard from the great God Jehovah that has given me accessibility and ability and boldness with ability to do a thing. Wealth cometh to me right now. See, the information that Isaiah spoke about gates being opened continually that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles, those gates and that information that he gave was carrying wealth accessibility, wealth manifestation, wealth miracles, wealth wisdom. My God, my God, my God. So, so, so the wealth anointing also causes you to dream about abundance. The wealth anointing causes you to dream about increase. Imagine and fantasize about having plenty. 
See, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 says that if you honor the Lord with your money, your 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 uh your barn shall break forth with plenty. Your barn shall break forth with plenty. See, what I want you to see is that store, another word for it in the Hebrew is also like a barn, like a farm. So when the Lord said that blessing shall be in your basket and in your store, now we also deal with Proverbs 3, 9, the store. It's also your barns breaking forth with plenty. And then another word for store in the Hebrew also is storehouse. Which Deuteronomy chapter 28 talked about your storehouse being blessed. So if we bring this all home, the father is thinking about wealth more than you. And he created the system of sowing so that you wouldn't love the wealth, but you'll love him. And the wealth can keep on coming to you because you're being made perfect in his love. See, when you love money, is greed. When you love God, is seed. You see what I'm saying? When you love money, is greed. When you love God, is seed. So he created the seed so that you will love him and know how to manage the plenty of money when it comes to you without trusting it, loving it, bombarding it, hoarding it. Now, saints, what you going to do when God opened the wealth vote over your life? Everybody, on, I want you to say this one time. Wealth cometh to me now. Just, just say it loud. Just say it. Release a declaration. I ain't say wealth coming to everybody. I'm talking about you personally. Say it to yourself. Wealth cometh to me now. Now, saints, remember I told you that store, another word for it in the Hebrew is vault. The Lord has a wealth vault that is reserved for your life. Another word for store is also reserved in the Hebrew. And since the word reserve really means that something, it is available, but it is set aside. You got to reach for it. It exists, rather. It exists. Reserve means that it exists, but it has been set aside for a specific time of usage. It exists, though. But it's reserved. That means that it's set apart. It's set aside. So saints, what I want you to catch is this. The Holy Ghost has a set aside well for you before you ever started sowing. The wealth vault already exists. The large place already exists. Now, saints, I want you to catch what David said in Psalm 18, 19. He said that the Lord has brought me into a broad place and he delivered me. Now, watch this. Look what David said. He brought me into a large place and he delivered me. So the deliverance was to get David from the lifestyle that wasn't large. The salvation, the deliverance was to get him out of the place that wasn't large. He said, the Lord has brought me. So, 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 so. When God delivered him, it was deliverance and direction at the same time. So that means that you can't truly be delivered without being brought to something. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Are you seeing what I'm saying? He said that the Lord has brought me into a large, pla a large place and then he said he delivered me. So the truth of the matter was 
when the Lord delivered him, it was to bring him to wealth. So every time the Lord delivers you, he has the intent and the motive to make you wealthy. Everything that God teaching you has plenty of money in it. Everything that the father is telling you about your character, your focus, your distractions, your weaknesses, your eating habits. Everything that he's talking to you about has wealth in it. Deliverance and brought go together. They're combined. See, he said, the Lord brought me to a large place. He has delivered me. The deliverance is to bring you to the large place. Now, saints, in the large place is really a wealthy place, which is in Psalm 66, verse 12. It says, thou has brought me into a wealthy place. So David spoke in two parts of the uh, uh, Psalms. Psalms 18, 19 says that the Lord brought me into a large place. And then in Psalms, uh, Psalms 66, verse 12, he said, the Lord has brought me into a wealthy place. So if you look at what David is magnifying here, is that the whole purpose of why God is delivering me and the whole reason why salvation cometh is so that wealth cometh. God can't get the wealth to come because if it comes while Satan is still the Lord over you, it's as if God is investing in Satan all over again. But if the deliverance happens to your soul, when God gives to you, he's given to himself. So saints, when God does business with you, he's really doing business with himself. And he's, he knows that his purpose is going to be fulfilled because God not going to betray himself with finances. My. Saints, let's, let's go to Acts chapter 4. So the money came to the church because they sold their house. But when they sold their house, the money that got into their hand ended up at the apostles' feet. See, God was doing business with them because God knew that they had completely conformed themselves to the image and likeness of God. The image, the image, how God looked, the likeness is how God does things. The image is his look. If you look at image, we see I'm age. It's, it's his age. It's his dispensation. All right. And then if we go look at our, our likeness, it's the overflow of being just like. Likeness is the same Clone is the imitation. That's why Ephesians 5.1 said, be ye imitators of God as dear children. So Ephesians 5.1 is really dealing with uh, Genesis chapter 1, which say, be ye imit uh, uh, that he made man, uh, man in his image and likeness. Let's make man. So saints, and then we look at that let us again, that word let in the spirit realm. It's a powerful phrase that God uses. So let there be wealth manifested in my life. Let there be wealth. Let my wealthy place manifest for me right now. When you speak in decrees, use that word let. Because if God could speak it like that and it could carry the power of manifestation, how much more would you? He said, let us make man our image and likeness and dig on man. And, and look at today, we look at people all the time. We see man all over the earth. Imagine how much more when you speak that word let. 
Let wealth and riches be in my house in the name of Jesus. Wealth cometh to me right now. See, wealth is a promotion for your devotion. If you take a note, write that down. Wealth is a promotion for your devotion. To be devoted mean that you stick with what God quoted. If you take a note, write that down. To be devoted mean that you stick with what God quoted. So devotion is really the ocean of your worship that God could swim in every single day. He could swim through your waters of obedience, your waters of faith, your waters of submission, your waters of consistency, your waters of wisdom, your waters of worship, your waters of willingness. And those waters are not contaminated waters. They are rivers of living water because you believe on him like John 7 says. Wealth is the health of your provision. If you're taking notes, write that down. I'm giving you some spontaneous wisdom doors flowing in this wisdom anointing. Wealth is the health of your provision. Wealth is the health of your money. See, poverty is financial diseases. Is a financial disease, rather. Poverty is a financial disease. Lack is a financial sickness. All right? So, so wealth is the healing anointing for money. My God. Jesus. I didn't even know I was going to say all this. But this stuff is blessing me too because, you know, when you live a life as a sower, you want to hear this stuff, it feeds your soul. Wealth is the healing anointing flowing out of the sower to heal their financial situation, heal their provisional department of life. Wealth is the healing anointing of your provision. Wealth is the power of God to be satisfied with more than you fantasize about. So when wealth cometh, God is taking things that you want and giving it to you in measures that exceed your expectation. Wealth is God giving you things that you want that exceed, exceed the, the, the measure of your expectation. So saints, really wealth is God giving an impartation to your faith so that it could move at his same dimension. Are you seeing this? Wealth is God giving an impartation to your faith for it to move at his same dimension. Because if God could take things that you want and give it to you in measurements, that's greater than what you expected, how much more he'll heal your body? How much more he'll deliver you from, from anything else? Because you already see the expansion. So, so, so God uses wealth to establish more advanced hope inside of you. More advanced hope. So that your expectation could reach the next grade level. If we look at the lifestyle of Abraham, when he gets that encounter with Abimelech and Abimelech transfer all that wealth and all those riches to Abraham, look at the confidence that Abraham is moving in. It's not that he didn't believe God, but the wealth was an impartation to his faith. So, so watch this here. When God tells him to sacrifice Isaac, look at his faith. He doesn't say, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do that. And he doesn't delay, nor does he come into a debate with Sarai. He just takes Isaac up and offers Isaac. Look at his swiftness, his quickness. He has an impartation of God's faith, hope, and love. So wealth is an impartation of faith, hope, and love in a new dimension. 
Wealth perfects your faith. Wealth perfects your confidence. Wealth is God exercising his dominion so that you could discover yours. If you're taking notes, write it down. I want you to think about that. Let me say that again. Wealth is God exercising his dominion so that you could discover yours. See, wealth is a, 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 a dominator's weapon. When you have wealth, you have the ability for uh, divine options. There's many different ways in which you could solve a problem, solve a thing, get something that God intended for you to accomplish done. Wealth enables you to successfully accomplish kingdom missions. Wealth gives you the ability to copy the life that you have in heaven on earth. Wow, 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 wow. How many of y'all just caught what I just said? Wealth gives you the ability to copy the life you have reserved for you in heaven on earth. Wealth is the translation of your eternal destiny manifested on earth today. Wealth is the translation of your eternal destiny being translated to you on earth today. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Wealth is the translation of your eternal destiny. Being established here on earth today. Let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 30. Look at this hundredfold. Father, I received a hundredfold in my life. Say it. Say it to yourself. Father, I received a hundredfold in my life. Say it to yourself. Father, I received a hundredfold in my life in the name of Jesus, the manifestation of the hundredfold. Let there be the hundredfold blessing of Jesus manifesting in my life today. Let there be the hundredfold return that Jesus promised me happening right now in my life today. Wealth cometh to me right now. Look at what Mark chapter 10 verse 30 says. Jesus said in verse 29 about leaving brethren, sisters, fathers, lands, mother, wife, children uh, for the gospels. He said, verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children. See, see, see. So, so this not no fake doctrine. Jesus got this in the text. He said, leaving father, mother, Sister, so, so stop acting like somebody hating on you. Jesus got this in the gospels here. He said, leaving father and mother and sister and brother and wife and children. So leaving children ain't no new doctrine. Leaving wife ain't no new doctrine. New, leaving sisters ain't no new doctrine. Look, Jesus said this. He said, if you let me have my way for my sake in the gospels. In verse 30, he said, but he shall receive a hundred fold now in this time and eternal and in eternal life of houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. And persecution mean that people are gonna attack you for hearing this and they're gonna attack you for preaching this. Persecutions mean that there's going to be strong disagreement and hatred manifested verbally against you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Strong disagreement and hatred manifested verbally against you. So I'm saying people are going to talk with their mouth and release evil against you because of your faith in this, your belief in this, your your declaration of what Jesus is saying right here. Wow, 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 wow. So it's saying that once you are a hearer of prosperity, a bearer of prosperity, 
you will now open up a conversation with evil people where they will speak evil of you. They will not like you. They will not agree with you. And they will seek to deter you from the path. See, when you live a life as a sower and a reaper, you build an altar where you're telling the father, I will not be distracted from what you promise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When, when, when you are a sower and a reaper, you build an altar where you say, Father, the word of the Lord stands for me. I'm not moved by body. I'm not moved by hatred, rejection, fear. The word of the Lord stands for me. See, there's many people that never start sowing, so they never tell God, your word stands above everything else. Their father's word stand before everything else. Their mother's word, their sister's word, their wife's word, their child's word. Everybody else's word has more validity and credibility than God's. When you start sowing, you single out and say, Holy Ghost, your word is the major word and the only word that will govern my life and decisions in this life. That's why when you're a sower, you walk in a unique path because you have an altar that you're working through the seed that communicates with the father that his word is highly exalted above every other word. And, and this is where your life comes out of. The sower tells God that every word that proceeds out of your mouth is my oxygen. Every word that proceeds out of your mouth is my report. Every word that proceeds out of your mouth is my verdict. Every word that proceeds out of your mouth is my future, is my present, is my reality, is my health, is my mindset, is my decision, is my position. That's why when you are a sower, God will have the person sowing into you teach you about your dominion. Nobody on earth could be a sower without a teacher. Because a divine teacher is soul and a divine teacher is seed at the same time. Is a seed sower at the same time, rather. So a divine teacher is soul but a seed sower. Mark chapter four said that the sower soweth the word. Well, that's your teacher. God gives every sower a teacher so that you could sow into them and they could sow into you and there'll be a seed collision and a harvest of provision. A seed collision and a harvest of provision. The glory on the soul intensifies when the teacher speaks with fresh revelation. Listen to what I'm telling you. The sound waves of the teacher, when it is in revelation of the knowledge of Christ, executes money cometh. executes miracle finances, executes wealth gates, wealth miracles, wealth favor. When the teacher of the word that the father has assigned to teach you, feeds your soul, empowering your faith, Advancing your hope. Promoting your imagination of God's goodness. When they successfully stir you to receive the life that God has promised you of abundance. It is evidence that the anointing and the glory is strong, strengthened. And is now a, a, a circuit for miracles. My grand 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wealth cometh to me now. 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 Let there be wealth in my life in the name of Jesus. Say it to yourself. Let there be wealth manifesting in my finances. Let wealth favor be upon me. Let wealth favor be with me, with God and with men. Let, let wealth financial favor saturate me everywhere I go. Let there be wealth in my provision. Let there be wealth in my environment. Let there be wealth and riches in my house. Wealth is loosed in my life in the name of Jesus. Gransi kino no. Kala kabe ne vienes. Vele vrekrovansi klini niyo. Nele kele nisi akalaziana. Wealth miracles are loosed in my life right now in the name of Jesus. I receive wealth in Jesus name. I receive wealth all around me. I decree and I declare the Lord is bringing me into a large place. I decree the Lord is bringing me into a large place. I remember when I was sowing in my younger years, I used to speak decrees over my seed. And I would speak so much that it became a reality to me and I felt a reality to me and I felt so good. I felt electricity. I felt energetic. I felt joy. And I would say, I named this seed the thousand fold. I speak the thousand fold cometh to me. I decree Deuteronomy 111 over this seed. I received the thousand fold, Lord. I received the thousand fold and I would praise God and thank God. Thank you, Lord, for the thousand fold in my life. Thank you, Lord for the thousandfold blessing. Thank you, Lord, for Deuteronomy 111. Thank you for your covenant. Thank you for blessing me a thousand times more. And I'm talking and the harvest will come. Time will happen and I'll see the harvest moving of that thousandfold. And I'll see the blessing just intensifying. Saints, we have seed that we sow of money, but we have seed that we sow of words. And when the seed of words and the seed of money is leaving us and we're receiving the seed that's coming from our soul, which is our teacher of the word, we have a threefold cord that's not easily broken, could never be broken. Did you just catch what I said? When we have seed leaving our mouth, decrees. When we have seed leaving our hands, money. When we have seed coming and entering into us, which comes from our man of God, the teacher of the word. We have a threefold cord, a triple threat for harvests. I decree and I declare over you a, a triple threat harvest is hitting your life right now. A triple threat harvest of the thousandfold, the hundredfold. I want to pray right now for my partners on here. I want to pray for you right now. Grazo tole mencia. Zele greso kufili nivian. Vane gros kele neviensko. Scale livienos. Kala gala neve krene nivienso cronovia. Balo no gremon si crina da gale nigo. Dele gron si kila nagia. Groman zono monjile kivisia. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've spoken your word on this line. All of my partners, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I decree and I declare the prophet's reward over their life. Prosperity over all my partners, everyone that's sowing into me from this ministry. I speak as the oracle of God right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, as I stand in your presence, great God, Jehovah, I bless my people in Jesus name. I bless the work of their hands. I bless the fruit of their body. I bless their health. I bless their eyes. I bless their ears. I bless their finances right now. And I decree the blessing upon their basket and their store 
Graza kuveve liviana. Lala ho sivian. Mendo gremantiai. Tolomondre kreskila naviono. Fale greze kleskere viniciano. Salanagies. Greze ananonziana. Halementrio. I speak the hundredfold upon their life. In Jesus name. Right now. Right now. I command money cometh. I command supernatural wealth. I decree wealth cometh to my partners now. I loose wealth. I speak the wealth gates over their life right now. As they have sown, they shall reap. The miracles just keep on coming. I have some of you all's testimony. I'll talk about it in the next broadcast, most likely. And prepare for even more miracles that's happening. The dispensation of miracles that's happening right now. Wealth miracles is where God causes uh, extreme amounts of money, extreme amounts of favor, extreme amounts of provision to get to you through unusual manners, uh, mannerisms or, or, or mechanisms rather, or methods. It'll get to you through unusual and unique ways. God will find a way to supernaturally expand you, increase you, enlarge your territory through ways that, that, that is phenomenal, is breathtaking. God has surprise wealth for the sower. Sowing does not leave you at a deficit. So and leaves you at a deliberation with God and the minister of finances to make you rich. So it doesn't leave you in a deficit. It leaves you in a deliberation with God and the minister of finances to make you rich. Think about it. God start deliberating on how soon there could be a deposit a miracle finances in your life. The seed takes God's mind into thoughts of massive abundance for you. The seed, every time you sow a seed, you come into a pregnancy of prosperity every single time. The seed is a pregnancy of divine prosperity. Every time the seed is sown, The Lord sculptures a strategy to overwhelm your bosom with much. Every time you sow, you're telling God that your bosom is hungry. I'm ready for you to feed me, Lord. I'm ready for you to supply me, Lord. Saints, do you know that another word for store in the Hebrew is supply? So, so in, in, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 5 and all, where it said that blessed shall you be in your store. Blessed shall you be in your supply. What God's saying, I'm going to make your supply rich. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord make it rich. So when he said, I'm going to put the blessing on your store. He said, I'm going to put a blessing on your supply. So what's coming into your life as income, I'm going to bless it. So there's going to be ways that money get to you, provision get to you. That's beyond your job. What you going to do when God placed the blessing on your store? That means my supply system now has the anointing of abundance on it. What you going to do when God put the anointing of wealth on your supply? 
I receive. Let there be a supply of wealth in my life in the name of Jesus. Let there be a supply of, of, of the wealth power of God in my life in the name of Jesus. Say it to yourself. Let there be a supply of wealth. See, the Lord has a wealth supply that he has promised and the promise of this wealth has gone to another dimension through the blood of Jesus, through the cross of Christ. Now we in another wave, another dispensation of the wealth of God. Through the blood of Jesus, through the cross of Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, the wealth of God is in another dimension, is in another level of appearance. This not the same epic historical wealth that Solomon experienced. It's greater. There's a one greater than Solomon here. Imagine the wealth that Solomon had was breathtaking. The queen of Sheba passed out. She was shocked. But King Jesus came with a wealth move of God that was way more explosive and effective and awe-inspiring than Solomon's day. Dreaming about wealth is a GPS to the bountiful sower in you. Wow. Wow. If you're taking notes, write it down. Dreaming about wealth is a GPS to the bountiful sower in you. So, so when you start thinking about wealth, seed faith start brewing in your soul. Seed faith. There's a grace. Seed faith become more gracious to your mind. It become more easy for you to conduct because God has given the gospel and the word of God about wealth so that honor will become creative for you. The creativity of sowing, the creativity of sowing, the creativity of sowing, the creativity of sowing is tied into wealth imaginations. The creativity of sowing is tied into wealth imaginations. If you can't see what's coming to you, you're not going to be able to operate in, in what God has scheduled to come from you. If you can't see, see, seed faith is a seer's anointing. Seed faith is a seer's anointing. If you can't see what's coming towards you, if you can't see what's coming towards you, you don't have the energy, the, the empowerment to submit to what's scheduled to come from you. Wealth imaginations purify your soul from fear. Wow. Wealth imaginations purify your soul from sparingly giving. It purges your soul of fearful sowing. It launches you into the world of trusting God and investing into God and taking care of God. Let me say this to you. Your man of God that teaches you the word of God and spends time imparting to you, living his life for your benefit, is rich soul and resurrection soul. I want you to catch this. The soul of your man of God has riches and resurrection in it. So, so you, you are a partaker of the resurrection power of Jesus through that man of God. So that's why you'll, you'll come out of sin. You'll come out of iniquity. You'll come out of fear. You'll come out of anxiety. You'll come out of depression, discouragement, because that's that resurrection power. 
grazo kole neviana. Zele kroski ala kalinio. Le mandele ke felenensia. Fole kale fe krofongo. Frolungo gagavienizia. Gagale nevienzo. Gaguzo gadafe krentili mianza. Vale nevienzo. Si quale nivies. Qualigio no greve kronaska ranzini. Greman balananzo. The resurrection power of the Holy Ghost is inside of your man of God. The resurrection power of the Holy Ghost is inside of your man of God. The power to come out of anything that's disconnected from God. Death. Whatever is dead in your life. The impartation of aliveness. Is in your man of God. Taking care of your man of God is a divine strategy to live in God's jackpot for your own self. Taking care of your man of God is reported by angels. Taking care of your man of God is reported by angels. Angels go before the father every day to report your sowing account, your serving account, your submission account, your obedience account, your faithfulness account, your pleasure account. Even receiving correction from your man of God is a pleasure account. Receiving rebuke from your man of God is a pleasure account. Angels go before God every day to report even the pleasure account, the faith account that you have invested in your man of God. Remember the word of God said, if you believe the prophet, that means have faith in the prophet. So your prophet is an avenue where you release faith, where your faith travels. Father, I release the anointing of prosperity right now on all my partners. I release the anointing of prosperity Glevano cranzinigo, nele palies craprakries kefelenizian, zano gronzi crina navanien, ele groske levenisiae, zara grosco ronzo pura nandre, drilazo lo folian, ala verio velevienes, eranue sicilianos, sala capies kelevienos, mele greze nivianto, granzi crina, granze grezon, grove filini, Falarango, falarango, malarango, maliango, gelemanzo leco valien. I speak the prosperity anointing on my partners right now. I speak the hundredfold return on my partners right now. Let there be the hundredfold and multiplication in Jesus' name.